All right, everyone. So today I wanted to shake things up a bit, and I already have plenty of videos on the channel where I get into what you want to do in Raid Shadow Legends. So do this, do that, so on and so forth. Well, today I wanted to do quite the opposite. I wanted to instead talk about things that you can comfortably skip in Raid Shadow Legends, uh, events and tournaments that you can feel good about. And the reason why I wanted to talk about this today is it's actually inspired by a recent event that just came out, which is very, very baity. And there's several things about this event that I wanted to talk about. So that's where we're going to get started. So let's go to the events page here. Now, we do have two new events that started. We've got the Arena Assault, and you can see here it is a one-week Arena Assault event. But that's not the event I wanted to talk about. It's actually this third one here, which also just started. Even though we have a timer here that says ends in 17 hours and 7 minutes, this Summon Rush just started at the same time as the Arena Assault, because it is a one day summon rush so that already is very baity because a lot of people are going to feel a lot of pressure with that short timer into thinking well i need to make a decision soon whether to summon or not and i know i already woke up today and i saw a couple of people message me on discord asking about the summon rush and whether uh, they think it's worth going for or not now that's not the only thing once we actually get into the event here you guys will see that the rewards look very enticing uh, we've got some good stuff here i'm not gonna lie four legendary skill tomes two epic skill tomes and even some gems and energy thrown in here as well that's a lot of good rewards and this summon rush also has two lines of rewards whereas typically i found this is not as big of significance but still worth noting um, is it's a 7,250 point summon rush, which is actually pretty big. That's a lot of points. Most summon rushes don't require nearly that many. And most of the summon rushes that have required this amount of points have usually had more than two lines of rewards. Um, so it looks like, you know, it's going to be a bit more of a grind in order to unlock all the rewards. But with only two lines, I could also see why some people might think that it's a little bit easier in order to achieve all the rewards than it actually is. But just taking a look at the numbers here, 7,250 points is over 360 ancient shards if you decide to go down that route. Now that is a lot of ancient shards. So the amount of points that you're looking at tacked on with that 24 hour timer, this is a very baity summon rush. Now the biggest significance of all of this is the fact that there's no other summoning events going on alongside with it. We do not have a double rates event. If you take a look at the portal glow, we don't see one. If we take a look at the actual eye icon right here, the chance of epics and legendaries are the same, 8%, half a percent, no 16% and 1% like they normally would be. Uh, sacreds are 6%, uh, no 12% like they would be with the double rates. There's no 10x event either, where they don't increase the chances of getting epics or legendaries, but they increase the chances of getting a certain rate up champions relative to others. There's nothing else going on. It is just quite simply a naked summon rush that takes a lot of points with a very short timer. So a lot of people are kind of wondering, you know, what do I do about this? Four legendary books is a lot. Now, I will tell you guys that you do not want to use your more valuable shards right now, like your ancients, your voids, and your sacreds. It's just not worth it. You're looking at over 360 ancient shards in order to max out this summon rush. And just at a comparison here, if you have the patience to save the amount of ancient shards that you would need in order to max out this 24 hour summon rush and you decide to save them for a double rates event, you are looking at an average. Now, these are just averages, of course, so that's important to note, but an average of three to four legendaries and 58 epic champions summoning that number of ancient shards during double rates. Whereas if you were to summon them right now, you're only going to be seeing approximately half that many. So that's a lot of extra epics, especially, and even a decent number of extra legendaries that you are essentially sacrificing in value by deciding to summon for these legendary skill books. Now, I know legendary skill books are very difficult to get. That's a whole separate problem all on its own that Plarium absolutely needs to address. But still, just the amount that you sacrifice in terms of the value from your shards to get the rewards from this event, it's just not worth it. Save your shards. Now, that's talking about Ancients, Voids, and Sacreds. But what about Mystery Shards? This is kind of the exception here. Because if you do have Mystery Shards, this is a fantastic time to use them. Now, the problem is 
Uh, the amount of points that you need to max out this event is 7,250. And that's a lot of mystery shards. So if you have a good reserve, these are going to be the times to use your mysteries. And this is why you always want to buy out any mystery shards that you end up seeing in the market. Absolutely make sure to get those. 5,000 silver is a great price. But it takes a very long time to save an adequate reserve of mystery shards in order to summon uh, a lot of them for these events. So if you have them, it's great. But it's important to note that it is not sustainable to have enough mystery shards to max out these types of events every time they come around just using mystery shards. It's just not going to happen. You're not going to get enough of them. So you really do have to be careful about it. You have to plan it out. You have to be smart. And I really emphasize plan it out. Because another thing is, if you do decide to go down that mystery shard route, don't just start randomly summoning. Because they're going to make a big mistake that I've made several times with these events. And that is, like, let's just say, for example, you have 2400 mystery shards and you summon 2400 now you are in a predicament because you needed 2000 for this epic skill tome you need 2500 for this legendary tome so you've used 400 more mystery shards than you needed compared to the amount of points for that last reward but now you're 100 away from the next reward so now you have to make that decision of how are you going to get another 100 mystery shards are you going to grind out or are you going to start using those more valuable shards that you're not supposed to use during an event like right now so if you do decide to just make sure that you're smart and you plan it out to make sure to uh, use the right amount of mystery shards for the corresponding amount of rewards so be careful about this event that's the best advice that i can tell you guys and definitely don't be fooled by these timers um, I've already gotten many people messaging me about this, so um, this is definitely going to be one of those, hey, I can skip this event and not feel bad about it, uh, opportunities in raid. Now, they have the exact same situation with summon rushes, uh, except they have that uh, tournament version as well. So they will occasionally do the exact same thing, where they will release a champion chase tournament, and there's nothing else. No double rates, no 10x event, just a, a random, plain old champion chase tournament. And these ones are really going to be whale bait because um, very similar to the summon rush, if there's no other events that are going on alongside with it, it's just not worth it. The amount of rewards that you get from both the champion chases and the summon rushes uh, doesn't equate to the value that you lose by summoning your shards when there's no double rates event going on. But it's whale bait because of the leaderboards. And you can see here that it absolutely does work because with this last champion chase tournament, the number one place in the world, the amount of points that this is corresponds to something like 27,000 Ancient Shards, which is absolute insanity. Uh, you're looking at twenty-five dollars to $50,000 worth of Ancient Shards to get the amount of points that first place got. Now, the exact amount is hard to know, depending on if they were able to buy most of their shards when they were discounted or if they had to pay the full price, which is terrible in Raid Shadow Legends. But either way, even with that low number, you know, these type of events really, really do draw the whale. So don't fall victim and don't take the bait. If there's no double rates, if there's no 10x, it's just not really worth it unless you decide to use mystery shards. So... The other type of events that you can comfortably skip on are, still sticking with summoning, are going to be most of the 10x events. Now, I always say double rates are the best because you have double the chances for epics and legendaries. The 10x events are the ones where they feature certain champions that have a rate up, and your chances of getting the rate up champions are higher relative to all the other champions in the game. They don't increase the actual chance of epics and legendaries. They just increase what your odds of getting certain champions are by lowering the odds of all the other champions in the game. Most of these you can comfortably skip out on. If you want to summon a few shards, that's totally fine. But still, the, the only outliers to this and the only exceptions are really, again, going to be the whales. People who have most legendaries and epics in the game and if one of these rate up events pops up where there's a champion that they it's one of the few champions that they don't have obviously that's a different story because getting a new champion is going to be better than dupes but most people don't fall into that category so i could safely say most 10x events you can 100 skip out on and feel good about it and you guys can be rest assured if polarium ever comes out with a 10x event where i feel like it is just absolutely insane and somehow better than a double rates event, I will let you guys know. But so far, with all the 10x events they've had, we haven't really run into that situation yet. So, all right, now let's get into 
uh, events and tournaments that are not summoning related because there's a few other ones that you can comfortably skip out on. And let's get into dungeon tournaments because there's three groups that I want to talk about. So dungeon tournaments pop up quite regularly in Raid Shadow Legends. But the problem is the rewards from the dungeon tournaments are not consistent. You will see very drastic differences in the rewards. And there's kind of three categories that I like to really place when it comes to the uh, dungeons, the dungeon tournaments. And that is the rewards that include a legendary skill book, the rewards that include an epic skill book, and then the third one, the worst of all, of course, is the rewards that don't have any skill books at all. And yes, they will occasionally release dungeon tournaments that don't even have a single skill book. Those are going to be the ones that you can 100% always comfortably skip out on, um, unless it's like a fusion event or something. You know, if it's not for a fusion and it doesn't have a skill book and you're looking at brews and a couple of gems, it's just not going to be worth the points to get those rewards. So you could definitely skip out on. Now, the legendary book is the opposite. That's going to be the one where you're probably going to want to try to go for those ones if you can. So keep an eye out on the dungeon tournaments. And if you do see one that pops up that's got that golden legendary book, you know, legendary books are very hard to come by. Skill books are a huge issue in Raid Shadow Legends. So those ones probably are going to be worth going out of your way for. And then you've got the one in the middle ground, which is the epic skill books. And these ones are 50-50. You know, if you don't have much else that you're doing with your energy and you want to go for it, that's totally fine. If you feel like you are really busy with other stuff in the game and your energy is going to be much better used for other sources, it's totally okay to skip out on it and not feel bad. I'd say those ones go either way and uh, you don't have to feel bad about it. All right. Now, the next one is actually a new addition to the list. And I added this because... Uh, the last 30,000 point champion training event, not the one that we have going on right now, honestly, I would say that was one where you could very, very confidently skip out on it because the rewards were just not that great. Now, champion trainings are a little bit tricky because you have to do a lot of farming for food anyway. But if you are really working on some other aspect of the game um, and you do not feel like going after points for these champion training events, definitely keep a closer eye on the reward structure more now than you were before because after that last 30,000 point one it really feels like Plarium has been toying with the rewards on these more and more frequently so um you know if you have to go out of your way 30,000 points is a lot that's going to take a ton of energy if you're already farming that's a total different thing you don't have to worry about it it's great to just pick up extra rewards if you're already doing that stuff anyway uh, but after that, it's a big red flag, and I'm really interested in the future to see kind of what the future of champion training events are, because they seem to be pumping them out more and more, but really toying with the rewards on them a lot more and more as well. And the last thing that I wanted to talk about today is fusions, because this has been a hot topic since the Skull Lord fusion, and I will say that there are kind of two different categories of people on whether it's going to be worth going for these fusions or not. Now, for the newer players, people who are still new to raid, and there's a lot going on. If you guys are still progressing through the campaign, you've still got a lot of missions to work on. There's just a lot of other places where you can put your energy to use. It's really just not going to be worth going out of your way to commit the insane amount of resources to go for one of these fusion champions when there are so many other things that you could be putting that energy to use. So I would say for newer players... Some of these fusions, it's just, it's okay to skip out on them. You know, sure, some of these champions, maybe they'll be okay better in the, more in the future, but the amount of progress that you lose having to go out of your way to spend the thousands and thousands of energy to go for these fusion items, um, it's just not worth it. Now, as a more advanced player, if you guys have already kind of done most of the progression aspects in the game, I would say it probably is going to be worth it because, again, you never know when these kinds of champions are going to get buffed. Even if they are not super great right now, it is still a legendary and uh, you might as well. But if you really feel like there's a lot of other important stuff to do, don't feel like you absolutely have to go for these fusions. That's a terrible feeling. I will end off this video saying the most important thing is have fun. If you ever feel like there are certain things that you absolutely have to do in Raid Shadow Legends, that's generally a problem. So try to avoid that feeling and make sure that fun in the game comes at the number one goal. So with that being said, that is going to be it for the video today. Let me know what your guys' thoughts are, especially about the events lately and the 24-hour summoning event that we have going on right now. 
Um, and yeah, that's going to be it. So thank you for watching. Have a great day, everyone. If you enjoyed, consider subscribing. Feel free to toss a quick like as well if you want. And if not, uh, until next time, this is Salt of the Salty Guild signing out.